Hi, and welcome to this special webinar about authentic enrollment. Uh, I am doing this webinar as a follow-up to a couple of recent uh, virtual events I did where I talked about authentic enrollment and conscious marketing. And this is a follow-on to answer some questions from the participants uh, and talk about some things that I didn't have time to talk about during those sessions. Now, if you didn't attend those sessions, that's okay. Um, you don't have to, to get a lot out of this particular session. I'll try to keep the concepts uh, easy to understand enough where everyone can apply apply them, uh, or everyone who has a, particularly a, a small business, a solopreneur type of business, typically the folks I tend to talk with and serve are coaches uh, or healers of some kind or consultants. So anyway, uh, good to have you here. I have a couple of participants live here already. I wanna thank Carol and Robin for being here, and um, I'm looking forward to bringing them on later if they wish to, and we can have a dialogue about authentic enrollment in terms of their own business. But let me just kind of begin with um, a, a framework, a very simple way to think about enrollment. So uh, there are, there's, um, I like to think about enrollment in terms of five ways of doing it, you know, sort of five paths to, to enrollment and visibility. The first path is quality. Uh, quality is the, the more you have structured your offer, your service, your business, your product, the more it has been structured to really meet the wants of your ideal audience, right? The more that the language you use to talk about the offer resonates with your ideal audience, the more that it meets them where they're at, the more that when you talk about your offer or service, they go, yes, it's exactly what I want. Okay, now notice I say want rather than need because um, we, to be effective in marketing our services and products, we sell our ideal audience what they want and we deliver what they need. Say that again. We sell people what they want and we deliver what they need. Now, why is there a difference there? Because if we start thinking, I'm going to sell people what they need, we just human nature is that we are in our own heads and so if we sell people what we think they need chances are uh because we are experts because we are farther along in the healing journey or uh, we've seen more we, we we're further along in the coaching journey or whatever chances are what we think they need is not what they want if they really need new what they needed, um, they probably would be further along and maybe they, would, they wouldn't need our services as much. <laughs> so we tend to, it's, it's, it's more important to talk with them and discover what they want and then frame what we do, what, what we provide people in terms of what they want. Now, of course, assuming that it actually truly does support and fulfill what they want, right? So um, for example, if I, uh, if I, you know, if I were talking to you, you're a relationship coach and I'm saying, oh, I just want you know, my wife to listen to me when I talk about this issue or that issue. It, the problem is her, you know, she's not listening. <laughs> you, you see, you see that, and that's probably what a per person would think when they go to a relationship coach. Uh, but then relationship coach would know that what I really need is more emotional intelligence or I need to uh, phrase how I talk about this issue in a way that meets her understanding of it or meets also allows her to feel supported and secure and all that, right? Another example is for healing, all right? Someone might come to you and say, I just want to get rid of this pain I have in, in my back, okay? And I just, that's what, that's what I want is to get rid of that pain. Well, what you realize they need is maybe they need better posture <laughs> or yeah, they need to practice or they need to take certain, maybe it's, maybe it's a, a kidney issue. You know, they think it's a back issue, but it's actually a kidney issue and they need to take certain remedies or do certain things, make certain lifestyle changes. So you see how we sell people what they want and then we give them what they need. And what, what they need, of course, what you, you, need, you need to make sure that what you give them also supports what they want and also gives them what they need that's on a deeper level. So that's the quality, right? The quality is being able to phrase what you do, in a, to, to understand your ideal audience well enough to phrase what you do in terms of what they want. Um, uh, so 
um, the second the second path to enrollment, the second element, I guess I could say, is quantity. Um, your ideal audience is looking for you, um, but they might not be looking for you in the places that you're showing up. So quantity is about showing up in enough places where you make it easy for them to find you. Um, nowadays with online, with social media, it makes it easier and easier. Uh, so if you are posting on a regular basis on social media such as Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Google+, Instagram, that kind of stuff, uh, it makes it easier. Now, you don't have to post on all those, but I recommend posting on two to start with uh, and try to post on, and, and which, which two should you post on? Whichever ones you enjoy. So again, Facebook, Google+, LinkedIn, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, and Tumblr are the seven big ones right now. Um, and just choose two of the seven to the ones that you enjoy. Just try them out, see which ones you enjoy, and start posting there. Now, social media is not the only place. You can also start an email uh, newsletter sending a tip or two once a week or twice, uh, once every two weeks. You, send it, you put it on your website, people sign up for, for tips about this and this and that, whatever you do, and then as people sign up, you send them tips uh, on a regular basis. The software I like to use for that is MailChimp. I know it sounds funny. M-A-I-L-C-H-I-M-P. It's a cute kind of brand, but it's a very useful software. You can start for free. I recommend that to all my clients. Um, so quantity is about you know, social media or email list or starting a blog and blogging you know, once a week, even if you write one paragraph, something useful that's helpful. Um, it's also going into online groups uh, for example, there's lots of Facebook groups and being helpful there. If you see someone asking a question that you know something about, you can have some insight on, comment on that, help them out. Or going to read other people's blogs, uh, you know, people in a similar industry as you or the same industry as you, they might be blogging and then you might notice that there are comments from, you know, especially if it's an engaged blog, there might be comments from others, other readers of, of that person's blog and you can comment as well and be helpful. Don't try to take over and say, oh, but check out my website and do this, but just be helpful and just make sure that people, if they click on your comment profile photo, they can find your website, you know? So just be helpful with tips and things. And if you do that in more places, um, that's the quantity path to, um, to enrollment. The third path is, um, is uh, partnering, okay? Partnering is looking at, and it's one of my favorite paths, it's looking at who else, what other service providers does someone from your ideal audience use? Okay, so for example, if you are a healer, uh, your ideal audience, your ideal client might be also using a chiropractor. They might also be using an acupuncturist. They might be using the services of a life coach. They might be using the services of a therapist. These are all potential referral partners for you. I mean, assuming that you don't do exactly what the therapist does or exactly what the acupuncturist does, right? But if there is a complementarity, if the acupuncturist solves certain things and you solve certain things and you can create a relationship with the ac acupuncturist and say, all right, listen, if I, if I come up with someone who needs your services, I'll, I'll, I'll send them to you and vice versa. If you can find someone whom you can't help but I can help send them to me. So partnering is a very powerful way of doing it. This, what I just said was referral relationships, but of course there's also, you could do partnering uh, with people who are online. Bloggers who probably have audience members that are like your ideal clients. You can partner with those bloggers to do a webinar for their audience where you teach something for free and valuable and helpful and at the end of the um, teaching, you make an offer to get some more free content from you, another, your email newsletter, or, or even a free consultation with you if you're open to, to doing that. Um, or even just directly sell a lower priced product of some kind, like an ebook or an online course or something. So that's, that's the third path, partnering. There's a lot we can talk about in each of these, but just kind of give you a quick overview. Fourth, part, fourth and fifth paths are ones that I don't recommend to most small businesses and solopreneurs. And the fourth path is, um, is, is uh, advertising, paid advertising. So buying Facebook ads, buying Google ads, uh, buying advertisements in your you know, local newspaper or, or local magazines. And the reason why I don't recommend them to most small businesses is because 
paid advertising, they, they, especially the people selling it, they make it sound so good. Oh, you could just pay $100 and get your message in front of thousands of people. Now, wouldn't that be easy? Wouldn't that be, you know? But the chances are it doesn't work that way. I mean, yes, your, your message is technically in front of all these people, but they are inundated with ads. And very, very few people are going to look at an ad, whether it's a local ad or online, and they're going to they're going to just end up you know buying your services. Now, paid advertising can be a good way to test whether a particular message is good. So some people say, well, I'm going to test whether this way of saying my services is helpful and 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 attractive to people. So I'm going to buy some Facebook ads and see if people click through to them. But I'll tell you this: aver paid advertising quickly accumulates money. Uh, you'll find yourself, oh my gosh, I'm spending all this money on paid ads and I'm not getting any clients yet. When there are, like I said, the other three ways, quality, quantity, and partnering are basically free. Well, the thing with partnering, though, is that some of your referral partners would be happy to take commissions. But the nice thing about commissions is you pay them after you get a client. So it's not prepaid advertising. It's post-client advertising. It's sort of like you pay after the, the, the sales are successful, post-sale spending. You know? But with paid advertising, you're paying in advance for a hope. You know, again, the, the salespeople will make it sound so good. Oh, you know, I had a client who had someone call her about putting her hypnosis, you know, um, uh, offering on, on a, uh, a, a, a prescription, um, you know, those prescription bags, you know, you get a prescription at a pharmacy and then outside, out, on the outside of the bag, there's a, there may be an advertisement. Well, they, he was going to charge her something like 500 bucks and it was supposed to go out to tens of thousands of targeted people. But you know, he was trying so hard. He kept following up with her. And I, I basically had her tell him, the salesperson, if it was so good, why are you trying so hard to sell this to me? Right? If like, I mean, if, if an advertising opportunity is so good that people, when they advertise, they got all these clients, can, you can imagine there's going to be a waiting list <laughs> to buy those ads, you know? But this is why advertising sales people try so hard because typically it, it, it almost rarely doesn't work as well as you're selling it to be. So, that's the fourth way. And the fifth way of, 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 of enrollment is hype, uh, manipulation, hard selling. Uh, now, why do I even say that that's a way of doing it? Well, it's because a lot of people use hype, manipulation, and hard selling in enrollment. And guess what? It works like gangbusters. It works extremely well, um, at least in the short term. Uh, because why? The human condition. Uh, human beings want to believe that some, what someone is saying is true, you know, but, you know I mean, before we're, before it's something is proven wrong, especially if you are a giver, especially if you're someone who has a, has a big heart, you want to believe that what they're saying is true. And so that's why hype and manipulation and deception and hard selling works on a lot of people, especially big hearted people, probably like, like you, those of you watching this and listening to this. Um, and so it works in the short term. People make lots of money with hype and hard selling and manipulation and deception. And guess what? Before I reformed myself, I used some of those tactics too because that's what I was taught and it worked. I made a lot of money doing that, but it doesn't work in the long term. It comes back to bite you in lots of different ways. Um, I think the most important way it comes back to bite you is your conscience. Uh, it's ultimately, in my opinion, life and business even business is not about selling and getting enough clients. I think life and even business is about growing in love and wisdom. I mean, really, all of this. Yeah, you've got you to have enough clients to support you financially, but all of it comes down to learning love and wisdom, in my opinion. So if you're using a means, oh, I just got to get enough clients and then I'll be a good person. You know, that's how a lot of people think. Let me just, I don't care about all the hard selling tactics. I just got to use it because I'm desperate for clients. I'm like, get those clients first. Once I have enough money, then I'll be a good person. No, you know, it, it, there is no such things as um, a means to an end uh, it, because there are no such thing as ends. It's all means. It's all process. It doesn't get to a point where you finally can be a good person. You know? I, I know those of you watching this probably don't even need to hear this, but I think it's important that we are human beings. It's important to be reminded that um, it's tempting. When we see people around us doing hard selling and hype, manipulation it's tempting to say well if they're doing it maybe i can do it too but you don't need to now that you know that there are other alternatives right okay so with that let me um let me go on to 
um, answering the questions of those who were live here. And also, um, uh, there's also a thread in my Facebook group where people can post questions, and I'll be kind of watching that a little bit too. So, a um, couple questions from, from Carol. And, you know, uh, Carol, if you want to, you can unmute yourself uh, and ask them uh, with your voice. Uh, you could feel free to do that anytime. Uh, otherwise, I see that you've also chatted it here, and I can answer it uh, based on that as well. So Carol says, how to get through... Oh, hi, Carol. Uh, hi. Now. Yes. Oh, so how to get through to through a potential client's story when they just are gushing and want to tell you all their troubles and you want to like do your enrollment talk and you barely can get a word in edgewise and when you do it just has them go on again and uh so i was wondering yeah. how to get through that <laughs> yeah, that's great thank you for what a great question so first of all it's important to know that there is a time limit to that uh free you know, discovery call or exploratory call. Well, let me ask you that first. How, um, how long are those calls for you or those meetings? 30 minutes. Oh, good. Okay. Okay. And of course the clients or the potential client is aware that it's just 30 minutes. Right. But okay. <laughs> they go, they, they, um, they hear that, but they're not watching the clock and right. they just gush. <laughs> okay. So this is good. Um, what I do, I also do 30 minute enrollment conversations. And uh, what I do is at the beginning of the call, I say, all right, the purpose of this call. So I start with the purpose of the call. The purpose of the call is first, I want to help you as much as I can, even in this half hour. And of course, some of that in, in involves understanding uh, what you're dealing with, the challenges and, and, and opportunities so that I can help you and, and share some things with you that will be helpful, even on this call. And the second purpose is to see whether uh, we would be a good fit to continue working together to um, fully resolve as, as much as we can all the issues that uh, I can help you resolve and, and get you to that next level of living and thriving that is possible for you um, when you use the right strategies, right? And you have the right support. So I, I'm clear with them in the beginning about that purpose um, is, is that something you do as well in the beginning? Yes. Okay. Um, if I <laughs> get a chance, a lot of times they come in and they're, and, and they're so desperate to get help and they want to tell me their whole life story. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, good. Well, I, that's the, that's the first thing is make sure you start the conversation Make sure you start the conversation yes. uh, with that purpose. And just and one thing that might help is, if, especially if it's like an in-person meeting, right? Mm -hmm. You can have some notes or some, a clipboard or, or, or something that, that, that they can see that you are making sure you, 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 you talk about certain things or making sure you're taking notes or something. But just kind of look down at the clipboard and, and you could say, all right, I want to make sure that we understand the purpose of this meeting, et cetera. Okay. So the second thing is, as they start talking about their problems and their life story, uh, you know, um, practice <laughs> gently interrupting them. And the way you can gently and kindly interrupt them uh, in a way that they feel supported is to say, okay, so give me a, uh, let me pause for one moment and let me just share back one thing I heard that I think is going to be important for our work together. So I heard from the last five minutes you were, you were speaking that, you know, there's this one issue that I, I, I particularly hear because I know that that's one issue we're going to be working on. Does that make sense? Yes, that sounds good. So, so, so at least every, well, I would say every five minutes is a good kind of, you know, nice rhythm if they're going on and on to, to, to kind of pause and, and reflect back on something that you, you're kind of bookmarking a topic that you know it's going to be a big in your work together with with that person now and then you could of course be writing that down okay another important thing is do you have are you looking at a clock or a timer of some kind yes oh good okay. when i'm at home and, and over the phone i have um a little time timer okay 
and um, they use it a lot um, for uh, kids with autism and mm. school and stuff like that. And, uh, and my kids never wanted it, so I find it very helpful for me because it's got this big red thing that really, you know, shows me the time. Yes. And um, so I'm very conscious of it. Okay. And uh, I have, that's excellent. I'm so glad you have it. I'm looking at my phone because um, there's an application, there's an app on, on, well, the iPhone, maybe on Android as well. That's called Timer Plus timer with the plus sign and I've, i found it very helpful so and it's uh, i think it was like it's like either free or like two dollars or something like that one time so it's, it's really really good um for any of you who have a smartphone okay so i'm glad that you're looking at timer so now that you know that every, every five minutes are you at least pausing and reflecting back one issue that's really good now the final thing that i do is i make sure that three minutes before the end of the meeting I then stop and say, okay, so we have three minutes left and I want to make sure that we talk about whether uh, it's a good fit for us to continue working together. Okay, so do you, do, you pa do you interrupt them a few minutes before the end? Yes. Oh, good. Yes. Okay, excellent. Um, great, so I mean, as long as you're interrupting them, it sounds like you are, yeah. It's hard, though, and sometimes, you know, I feel that they, you know, am, you know, would it be helpful for me to finish listening to what they have to say, um, and also, you know, finding that break where I can, you know, get in there yes. and pause them without, you know, having them get upset that they're not getting to finish what they want to tell me. Yeah. Well, I hope that this technique of every three to five minutes gently interrupting and say, okay, let me just reflect back one issue I heard that's important that we'll be working on. Yes. And kind of okay. writing that down. And, yeah. so by, and so by the end of the uh, 30 minutes or at, 27, at the 27 minute mark, when you finally interrupt them at the, the final interruption and you say, okay, so we've got three minutes left. I want to make sure we talk about, actually the way I do it, I'll say, the way I do it is I say, okay, I've got three minutes left. I want to make sure I answer any questions that you have about how, how I work with with clients and if any questions about my my coaching i'd say my coaching program but you could say about you know the the way i work with clients do you have any questions about that so i kind of put put it the ball back on their in their court to see if they want to find out more about um you know what i do so that's really helpful because then they'll go oh yes uh you know um how often do you work with or how many sessions will we be having or whatever you know the right, right. they often ask or um, now, if they don't have any questions, right, what mm -hmm. you can then do is you can look down on your notepad and say, okay, so let me just clarify some of the key issues that I heard in this conversation thus far that I think, I think will be extremely beneficial if we work on these uh, through our sessions. The first issue is this, second issue is this, third issue, I mean, if you had been interrupting them at least every five minutes, right. you would have four or five issues. Mm -hmm. and, and as you repeat that back, I would imagine they would feel hurt. They would feel like, yeah, that's, and you, you're probably even saying the issue in a way that's enlightening for them. You know, right. Right. They, right? Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Yeah. So I, Carol, I, I look forward to seeing you try this and, uh, and let me know how it goes. So then the last piece, I mean, yeah. after you clarify the key issues, you've answered their questions, you've clarified the key issues, and then the hook. So would you be interested in working with me, right? Yeah, exactly. That's, right. That comes next. Yes. Um, so um, let's reframe this a little bit. Uh, I, I understand what you mean by the hook. Um, it's, the, it's the thing that gets them in the door finally and gets them to sign up. And so I, let's actually even re use a different word. Yes. Um, we'll just say the, um, the admission into your practice, you know, um, I used to be an admissions officer for a, for a university, for a college. So I think oh. about admissions like you're, because remember this, it's not just you having to sell them on something. It's you allowing them mm. to work with you. Yes. It's you yes. allowing them to take up a space, a valuable, precious space, in your practice and so I maybe use the word admission or use the word um, intake or use the word um, 
confirmation or or so so i just just for your own thinking i think it's helpful yes, to, to turn it around so that you realize that you're interviewing them as much as they're interviewing right. in fact i i always think about i don't even think about them interviewing me i just think i'm always, i'm always interviewing my potential clients are they really a good fit because remember this the better a fit it is the less selling you have to do mm -hmm. And so that conversation and those writing down of the issues, as you look down and three minutes before the end and you're looking at these issues, and if you truly believe that you can help her or her him with these issues, then it's a great fit. Then you, then you tell them, say, listen, you know what? So I would say, Carol, I think that given these four or five issues we talk about, I think that you're actually a great fit for my practice, for my coaching. I think I can really help you. So the next step, if you want to um, uh, say yes to this, and I just let you know, I do have, of course, a limited number of spots. And so the sooner you can let me know, the better. Um, actually, I, I actually give my, the way I enroll, of course, is that I have my coaching program opens once or twice a year, depending on if there are spots. And so I tell them, hey, listen, the coaching program starts a certain time. For you and for others watching this, it, you may be enrolling on an ongoing basis. So there's no like start date, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So, so in that case, just say, you know, um, if you are ready to get going, we can schedule our next appointment today. So that's a nice way to confirm that. Great. Yeah. yeah. Does that make sense? I like that. Yeah. And if they're saying, you know what, I got to think about this, say, great, please do think about it. Let me know. Uh, if you can, let me know um, uh, by next Monday so that I can have a sense of whether uh, to keep the space open for you in my practice. So give them an actual date. And of course, the nice thing about giving them an actual date to let you know by is you can follow up on that date to say, hey, Carol, um, I loved the conversation we had last Wednesday. Uh, just checking in with you. Uh, given these four or four issues we talked about, I'm really looking forward to helping you resolve these and get to this wonderful state, whatever that is, uh, of, of living. And should we schedule our next appointment? If so, here's the link to schedule it or whatever. You know, give them the next step, make it easy for them to schedule the next appointment. Great. Love it. Yeah. Excellent. And so, Carol, um, do you want to share, if, you, if you're open to it, share with the audience uh, who you are and what you do for a little bit and how they can follow up and, and watch your journey unfold? Sure. Um, I, uh, I have a, a business, a coaching business, where I do general coaching on any issue that you may have um, if you're stuck in something and want to move forward. And I, I create action plan for you specifically personal action plan on your goals and what you want to do and i help you and move you forward walking with you cheering you on and and giving you little nudges through the, the challenging parts and and walk with you through your comfort zone to achieve what you want to achieve and i also have a specialty that i work with those on the autistic spectrum the um, high functioning um, adults, teens, young people that have difficulties perhaps in the social area, in communication, in organizing, and I'm also an ADHD coach. So I, I work on all those levels to what you want to achieve. And sometimes I know um, um, people with those challenges need an, a little extra layer of help and and I work with them on their specific scenarios their specific issues such as um, maybe they have um, a difficulty with the work and I can help them in the relationships there mm -hmm. maybe they, they want to go on a date and they don't know exactly what to do and I can help them with that wonderful um, so how can how can folks uh, find you and uh, follow your journey so they can contact me by emailing me at Carol. Actually, at, you know what? Uh, instead of email, maybe you can give a website or a website. My yeah. website is not up yet. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, um, you can you can give your email if you like. Okay. Um, well, why don't you? They can contact me at support at alliedjourney.com. S u p p o r t at a l l i e d j o u r n e y dot com. Great. Thank you, Carol. I'm Thank so you. glad you 
came onto this call and we were able to uh, work through something, which I believe will be useful yes, for a lot of people. Yes, great. So, Thank you yeah. so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. So I'll let you, you know, meet yourself back if you're, when you're ready. Um, so uh, got another live participant here who may have a question. Um, Robin, if you're open to it, please uh, say hello and share with us what's on your mind. Thank you, George. I would love to. Um, so I'm just beginning this process. I, I used to be employed until 2007 or six, I guess, when I quit um, in the States. Mm -hmm. And I went, I left my whole life and all of that to follow my dreams and heart to Mexico, where I've been living for the last eight years. Oh, wow. And I took a um, <laughs> conscious uh, you could call it retreat for several years where I had um, no schedule, no obligations, and just um, kind of followed the moment and yeah. learned and reflected a lot. And so I purposefully stepped back from all of that and I had sold my house and so I didn't have to work. Mm. Then I um, started, then I felt like I needed to work and so I started doing kind of little simple things, which is what I've been doing for these last years. I have many, many um, kind of talents that I do. I have a background in graphic design and um, photography and documentary filmmaking, and I'm a professional cook and hmm. um, a lot of different things. So, but there's been a lot of fear and stress for me around money mm. and not feeling... Um, like I have anything to give that anybody would want to pay for. Mm. So I've been in that for quite a while. And then um, this last summer, um, I took a, I was, I, I felt inspired. I, I've wanted for a long time to be a health coach, even mm. before it was really a field. I had this kind of a, a picture of, of how I would like to support people in their journey to wellness, you know, to have a, like an advocate and to feel like they had choice. And so I took a health and wellness training this summer. And so I am just recently, like for maybe the last month, I am certified as a health and wellness coach. So I'm trying to turn everything. I'm, I'm really like starting fresh, starting a new place sure. in my life. Yeah. So I have that. Um, and so what I'm, the vision I have is to combine that with me being a food expert with, with the third piece, which is um, I'm just finishing up a course right now, which will certify me to be a facilitator of creativity workshops. So as I have a, I'm a very creative person and I'm mm. always coming up with my own personal inner work, uh, coming up with all sorts of creative ideas and ways to, to do the work. And so I see myself, really incorporating a lot of creativity into the, the work that I do with people. So um, I know that's a lot, but, but just, to like, just to say where I am. And so right now I'm in California. My mom is elderly, and so I'm um, in my second year of doing a six-month stint here, mm. kind of caring for her mm. and working on a memoir. Mm. Um, and now I'm going to go back to Mexico for six months, and then I'll come back here one more time in November. So... Money is like a real issue. It's like yes, I need to earn money, but I'm yeah. not all in one place right now. So mm -hmm. it became obvious to me that the first and next thing that I need to do is not just sell energy bars at the organic market. I really need to, to do more than that. You know, I want to be able to pay rent on a house where I could have my wonderful creativity workshop. So the obvious thing to me was I need to get an online presence and with my health and wellness coaching. So mm -hmm. I saw, listened to your, uh, your YouTube videos about the seven day. Yeah, seven day startup, and, yes. Yeah, so I thought that's really great. So I've been trying to do that. Mm -hmm. And so I'm on step one and I work at it every day. Great. So I'm trying to get, yeah, so I'm really trying to, now I'm not gonna be doing it in seven days, but if I, yeah. I thought, you know, if I could do a week, for sure. each step or 10 yeah. days even or even yeah that's that's even that's faster than most people <laughs> exactly and i really liked your idea of not investing you know six months in something and then launching it and then i would be so attached to it that i wouldn't you know so i like this idea it feels very like kind of loose and fluid yeah. your idea so i'm trying to do it mm -hmm. so i've been working really hard on it and 
I was reading it over again today because I can see myself starting to stall and starting to get too into the copy of, you know, what yes. would be on the website. It's like, no, you know, just keep moving. So I was like rereading step one today. Yeah. So it was perfect that this conversation is now. And, and I felt like, that, you know, like to address the pain. And, and, you know, like Carol said, she's a life coach and her description was beautiful and it was really general. And so I'm thinking to myself, I'm trying to find like, what is it that's special about what I offer mm. um, that would draw someone to health and well, wellness coaching where I'm not focusing on a specific area, not like if you have diabetes or if you're overweight. Um, but so far where I've come to is that, you know, my real gift is in, I listen very deeply mm -hmm. and I can inquire in a way to help people find their own inner truth and wisdom and then guide them to the changes that they want in a way that um, honors who they are and that, um, that they can do and eventually learn to maintain. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so I, I love that you are following that seven-day startup uh, methodology. Uh, and for those who are watching and listening and don't know what that is, uh, you can just go to google.com and search seven-day startup, uh, our highest work, because that's where I shared the videos on that YouTube channel, our highest work seven day startup and then you can start with part one there's three three it's a three part video series to walk you through the seven day startup process so uh Rain, um i i almost said your your middle name <laughs> robin, Most people, I, a lot of people call me that it's okay rainbow yeah yeah i like that uh robin i i, I love that you, you're already doing you're already doing the process where uh are you maybe we could talk a little bit about where you are feeling stuck in terms of step one. Um, what's mm -hmm. holding you back a little bit there? Yeah. Well, so it's on, I guess I've been working on like my elevator speech, you know, like trying to get it short yes. and trying to get clear on um, how would I talk about what wellness coaching is mm -hmm. and how it differs from other things and what I bring to it. So I guess I'm, kind of circling and feeling a little stuck on getting that clear and precise. Okay. And then I think next yeah. would be building confidence to say it. And then the next after that is contacting some people and checking it out. So, yeah. Okay. Well, um, one exercise that could be helpful is to emulate how others are already saying it. Um, so uh, sometimes, um, when we are creating our own passion business, um, we imagine that we have to make something really unique, uh, mm -hmm. that, you know, something that's our own voice and our own uh, methodology or, you know, but the truth about the truth of the matter in my experience is that nothing really is original. You know, everything is a, a, a remix. Everything is a mashup, what they call a mashup, mashing up two ideas that we've heard of before that we've seen elsewhere. Uh, a lot of times it's subconscious. We don't even realize that, that we're re remixing something else or rashing up two or three or four different ideas that we in our subconscious had, had, had glimpsed from elsewhere. Uh, so I just, you know, I, I invite people to bring that, con bring that process conscious, make it conscious to say, all right, um, there's no need to reinvent the wheel. We, we can all stand on the shoulders of other successful people. Um, that's how humanity evolves. That's how we all grow together to become better. Um, and so uh, it can be very helpful to either do a Google search or ask around, but look for uh, other health coaches that you really admire, um, that you go to their website and go, yes, that's exactly what I want to be doing, or wow, that's really similar to what I want to be doing. And just start borrowing phrases, you know, um, of course, you got to be careful about trademarks and whatnot, but, but you, it's, o it's totally okay to borrow phrases, you know, from people, um, because chances are they're not the only ones using that phrase. And if you're ever wondering, well, are they, is that somehow that phrase unique to them? You can, you can do a Google search and put that phrase in quotation marks and do a search and see if there are many other websites that use that phrase. And if so, then you're safe. You can also borrow that phrase. Uh, does that make sense? Or is that, is that helpful? Yeah. And I've been doing that. Oh, good. And, um, uh, I don't know. I guess I, I get stuck with thinking like, 
like it's I guess not feeling like it's not good enough like what I'm doing isn't good enough uh -huh. so um, tell me tell me more about that uh, <laughs> good enough for whom right that someone will want what I have to offer right so here's the great great question um, another way to phrase this is will it be a profitable niche is it a profitable service right and so if you are looking at other models, uh, you know, other health coaches, and if from their website you get a sense that they are successful and it's hard, it's, it's hard to actually know if someone is successful by looking at their website. Mm -hmm. uh, what I look for is I look for testimonials. Mm -hmm. um, if they have a social media presence, I look at how many people have liked them on Facebook or follow them or, uh, you know, Twitter, you know, is lots of followers or, some, some kind of social proof that, you know what, they have, a, they have a large audience or they seem to be thriving in, in the people they serve. The, the people they serve seem to be thriving based on the help from this coach. And if you have a sense that, you know, they're probably successful, then you know that if you emulate or borrow phrases from them, it's going to work, probably. Because if it's worked for them and they probably have done enough research or they've done, especially if they have years and years of experience, they've already tweaked the phrasing of things in a way that they realize that the audience members get it and want that. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, uh, so, so feel free to borrow phrases uh, to, um, yeah, because you know that it's, you don't have to spend years testing those phrases and those ways of saying it. And then it's okay to still just offer general health and wellness coaching. Okay so, okay, so let's talk about sort of the specificity of your niche. Um, if you see, again, if you see other models, other health coaches that are offering general health and wellness coaching and they seem to be thriving, then why not? It seems to work, right? If it works for other people, the world is large enough. There are, this is the, this is the fact, okay? Practically speaking, each of us has unlimited numbers of potential clients that are ideal for us. Practically speaking, of course, you know, technically there's a limit to the number of people on earth, a <laughs> limit to the number of people who have money to do this, all that stuff. But in terms of the everyday practice, in terms of how we should think about it, we have more people that uh, we could help than um, that, I could, that are meant for us to help than we have time for the rest of our lives because there's just that many people, you know, uh, in, in the market. Um, uh, now that's not true for every single market, but for health coaching, that's certainly the case for life coaching. That's certainly the case. So if you, um, yeah, so that's my that's homework for you then Robin is to look at models that you respect and say, are they, are they also a general health coach? And if so, are they thriving? And if so, why couldn't I do that too? Okay. And can, uh, yeah. And so before developing a website, just collect those things and then turn it into um, just kind of what clear thinking for me and, and a way to, to explain verbally to people what it is that I do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, cause your, your website, uh, and your elevator speech are connected. Um, yeah. If you are able to say to people what you do, that's going to be, a, you can almost literally cut and paste or copy and paste that elevator speech onto your website. Of course, yeah. on the website, you would say more. Uh, but yes, that's really the first step is to be able to say concisely what you do in just say one minute um, yeah. and to practice that, you know, and uh, I'll just kind of, repeat a, a script that I give to people uh, to help them with that elevator speech. So um, whom you help, and if you can be specific about that, that's great. But just whom you help, meaning is there a particular age group? Do you mostly help women? Do you mostly help men? If, if you help both, don't, don't say what the gender is, but uh, is there a particular age group that you believe you can most help? Is there, are there people with particular challenges that you can most help? Are they, go, are they going through a particular transition? Uh, are they a particular profession? You know, so any, any kind of demographic data you can, you can say is great. If you, don't, if you don't want to say that, that's fine too, but that's, that's the first part of the script. The second part is the problem they have. 
that you love helping them solve, right? And so um, be as specific as you can or give examples of the types of problems you love helping people solve with their health, in your case, Robin. Mm -hmm. The ideal state you love helping them get to. Uh, so this is almost the flip side, you know, of that. But just describe in, you know, 10 seconds, 15 seconds, the, the, in something aspirational, something inspirational. The modality you use to help them get there, you know, give an overview of that. Like if you're doing a one minute elevator speech, it would be somewhere around, you know, 10 or 20 seconds, you know. And then finally, uh, and this is a new part of the, the, the script I've added, is the bigger cause that you're really here for, uh, the bigger mission that uh, you believe that most people can identify with. So, you know, Robin, um, you know, for you, it might be, you, 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 your mission is for everyone on the planet to thrive in their physical and emotional bodies so that they can um, live the lives that they were meant to live or, you know, something, something aspirational. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, um, so, so yeah, so that, that's the, that's the homework, right? It's to come up with the elevator speech by borrowing if whatever phrases you already inspire you. And if, if you're looking for phrases, borrow them from other health coaches that inspire you, that you respect, that seem to be thriving in their businesses as well. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You so much. You're, welcome. you're so yeah. generous. Thank you, George. Oh, you're welcome. I, that's, I'm here to help, and I'm so glad you're here, and so glad that this is helpful. So. It's a beautiful model. You know, I'm, I'm choosing to follow it. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, We've got uh, another caller that just called in, um, you know, optional if you want to unmute yourself and or post in the chat. Um, uh, if you have a question, uh, I'll just say your first name, Marcy. If, you're, oh, if, you, if you want to unmute, you can uh, click the um, microphone button on the bottom left of the video. So on, move your mouse over the video, bottom left, there's a microphone button. You click that, you'll unmute yourself. Um, so, uh, while I'm seeing if anyone else and really Carol and Robin, if you have any other questions, uh, great time to, to speak up again. Otherwise, uh, while I wait, I will, uh, let's see if I, what else I could share that would be helpful right now. Okay. Let me say a little bit about, about money. Um, uh, given that, you know, Robin, you brought that, that, uh, question up and also probably everyone listening to this has some. Uh, some issue with, with money. And I'll just say what I believe is most helpful about feeling good about your income and your savings and all that stuff. So the first thing I'll say is this, and you've heard this before probably, what you, um, you cannot manage what you don't measure. You cannot manage what you don't measure, right? So if you want to manage your money well, you've got to learn to have a consciousness that you are measuring it, okay? And what I mean by that is as simple as, uh, and I know this can sound scary for some of you, but are you looking at your bank accounts on a regular basis? How often are you doing it? Um, when I was in the state, in, in the state of my business and life where I had to really think closely about money, um, I was looking at the bank accounts just about every working day, you know, like five days a week or, uh, I mean, I wasn't doing that for a whole year, but I was doing that for probably a couple of weeks in a row just so I can have the consciousness of, okay, how, how much do I have now? And how can I, you know, just kind of envisioning for like, how can I, grow this to the amount that I would like it to be. So that's my first challenge and, and maybe homework for you is to look at your bank accounts, uh, the amount you have in your accounts on a regular basis, whether that's once a week or whether for a few weeks it's every day. Uh, but even now I look at it at least once a month. Once a month is, is the, the very, usually you know, each month is you know, once or twice a month I look at it. Um, so that's my first question and assignment for you. The second uh, question or assignment is, do you have 
savings goals? And are you clear what they are? And are you saving in those envelopes on a regular basis? By envelope, you could literally imagine a physical envelope that you're stuffing cash into on a regular basis. But of course, these days, most of the way we manage money is online, digital. So do you have a document somewhere, whether it's a paper document or a spreadsheet online or something, where you have categories that you're saving for and you're putting some money into those categories on a regular basis? This is important. What you, what, if you don't measure it and you don't consciously look at those categories, you're not managing them. So some categories that are important are uh, so I think probably the, the most important category for all of us is a um, life expense buffer, a life expense buffer. And what I mean is uh, it would be really good for you to save at least six months of living expenses in a, in a particular category that is just for that. It's not money that you spend but it's money that you keep on having and maintaining at least six months. I was six months to two years is really nice. I mean, two years is probably the, the maximum you really need because, well, especially if you follow the seven day startup model, you can make money sooner than, you know, if you start from scratch completely, it'll take you definitely less than two years to, to make money and hopefully to get up to a, the level of income you want. So I think two years is a nice maximum. Uh, a nice minimum is, is six months or even three months. It gives you a, some breathing space. You can find some other source of income within three months or six months if you had to, right? So that's, that's important. And that's an envelope, whether it's a digital envelope or, or um, now. Now, the, the, a question comes up is, should, should these be separate bank accounts? Should, these, should you have a separate bank account for, you know, Basically, some people call it emergency savings or life expense buffer. Um, you can, but uh, you know, especially if you can create free accounts and there's no cost to you, why not? To kind of really separate that in, in not just in your mind, but out there in the real world, there's a separate account for that. It's that important. Okay, just like you may have a retirement account that is the money that you want to have when you can no longer work, that that's going to support you. And that chances are it's a separate account. Uh, why not have a separate account for life expense buffer? Now, I don't have separate accounts. I just have a business account and a personal account. But I use a spreadsheet. That's how I use it. I use a spreadsheet in one row is, you know, uh, I, I have a spreadsheet where I have multiple rows. And at the bottom is the total number. And that's the amount I have in a particular, my, you know, my personal bank account. And so I'm always checking these rows and the final number and just making sure that that's the same as what the, the bank says I have, you know? So, okay. Um, so life, life expense buffer is really important. Um, another buffer I think that is helpful uh, is a fun buffer. You know, what do you love to do? If you had enough money, what would you love to do? Maybe it's travel more. Maybe it's go to a certain retreat. Maybe it's buy a certain thing. Maybe it's going to the movies but have a fun category so that your money is not always, when you think of money, it shouldn't be always doom and gloom. It should be, money can be fun. Why not? Money is neutral. It could either be doom and gloom or it could be a tool for your thriving, your nourishment, your enjoyment. And so have a category, and this may not be worth setting, or maybe worth setting a separate account too, right? But have a category that you look at on a regular basis that's your fun money and you keep adding to it. And as you add to it, you can also withdraw from it to, to actually go do the fun thing that you were saving up for. I think that's really important to change your relationship with money so that it's also about fun and not just about requirements and needs. Does that, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So um, I have a, an entire, uh, if you can imagine, a, a free video training series. Uh, all my content these days is free. I used to sell all this content, but now I just give it away for free and I only charge for you know, my coaching. Um, but I figure, why, if, if, I could, if I'm going to say the same thing to every client, why shouldn't I put it out there for everyone to consume? And so, um, so I've, I've given away for free. It's called Conscious Money Flow. And you can find it uh, if you just go to google.com. And um, let me just actually make sure that's the, that's the case. If you go to google.com and search um, Conscious Money Flow, um, 
and, and type conscious money flow should bring you there. But if for some reason it doesn't bring you there, um, put conscious money flow, our highest work, okay, conscious money flow, our highest work. And um, I have at this ter- current time, I have three videos, uh, part one, part two, part three for conscious money flow. So check this out. I hope it benefits you. And with that, uh, I am at the end of the hour here. And so I do want to uh, keep, keep to a good time. Thank you for being part of this. Those of you who were able to be here live, those of you watching this, uh, thank you for watching this or listening to this. And I always like to end each episode with the reminder that you are taken care of by powerful forces beyond your imagination. Your destiny is secure. You, your consciousness, and your soul is ever evolving and growing to a place of infinite, complete bliss, creativity, power, and love, and wisdom. That's where you're going, for sure. So Mm -hmm. with that knowledge, do your highest work every day, every day that you do work, do your highest work with diligence, with love, with compassion, especially for yourself with gentleness. So until the next episode, be well.